Uh, so, next match, it is going to be Elo Hell versus Armageddon. What do we know about these guys? I, I, I mean, I'm so looking forward to see Elo Hell play because I played Overpower. against them. I played against them uh, with SK. I've trained against them a lot. Um, the mid laner, um, Oberpau, is really, really good. People will get to know him, you know. Uh, he plays different a different champion pool, I would say. He has a different champion pool than the o others AP meets. And um, it's going to be a, a really, really interesting game, I guess. And I mean, Armageddon's coming into this one. They're going to be the Singaporean team. So they're one of the locals, I guess you could say. They're going to have maybe the crowd behind them. We, we, we know nothing about them, of course. We know nothing about them. And we, uh, to be completely fair with you guys, we don't want to, we don't want to build up something that's not there. We expect very, very little from them. But that may just be their wild card because but they may have a strategy that no one... Uh, well, Elo Hell won't know them either. This exactly, is the thing. Yes, so yeah. they won't know what they're up against. They don't know what to ban. They're, I guess they just, I mean, when you're in that sort of phase, also like, when you, you just go with the generic bans, mm. whatever you don't want to play against, or do you just come into this one with a straight mindset, we're going to play this comp and it's up to those guys to counter us. Well, that is a, that is a mistake because as we could uh, as we saw the um, KLH um, in the previous game, they went for like poking setup, no matter what. Poking setup, poking yeah. setup. And they got owned by a going setup. So you cannot have one idea. You, ha you, ha you have to have corner ideas. You have to have a lot of uh, strategies. If you go only with one idea, everything is counterable. Everything. So it's not, a, it's, it's not the, the good thing to do. A apart from Diana or Ariana. <laughs> Just first pick. <laughs> Actually, Oriana can get cornered. Diana cannot. By what? That Oriana can get cornered by a good going setup. I have to say, Oriana is really OP. Yeah. Under the under the hand, but she cannot get countered. I mean, she, sorry, she can get countered by a, by a going setup. Diana, on the other ca on the other hand, you can play a lot of stuff with Diana. I mean, she has yeah. really good AOE damage. She has uh, decent survivability. I don't know. I think Diana is one of those champions you cannot counter. It's really hard to play against. I mean, you said at the start, it's it's one of those that you'd instock first pick. So would even Karina. I mean, that Karina are like most likely the same right now. Yeah. Really, really good matches, one v one. Really, uh, really good AOE damage. I don't know. They are really. And, and looking back at that last game, because you mentioned well during the picks, you thought Katarina should have been picked there. Do you think that would have influenced it any differently the way that game went? Maybe not really, because top lane was so far behind. But on the other hand, if the game was more uh, was more tight. You you could notice in the team fights that that, that Karina would have been alone, and Karina plus the ace on one carry, bye bye carry, no matter what. And if Karina gets the reset, you know how it works. Yeah, indeed. So uh, we're waiting for the teams to set themselves up. Obviously, they are on stage here in Singapore. They're trying to get themselves in position, which is why we are uh, watching us three rather than uh, the the current game of League of Legends that goes on. Um, Zenon, you this is this is your first event in a while. It's, yes. it's it's good to see you here. I mean, there's a lot of people who go, "What's happened to Zenon? He hasn't dropped still off alive. the face of the planet. He's yes. still alive." Um, you actually were at the regionals. You did the German stream, didn't you? Yes, I did the uh, did the German stream of the, the finals with uh, Foreign Lord, of course, the AP mid for uh, the highest Elo player in the yeah. world. Highest Elo. The only one who ever uh, broke the 3K. I I mean, I don't e uh, is he still holding that record now that they've had the soft reset? I don't know what the letter looks like at the moment. Actually, no. we don't have the new letter on the website yet. I, I don't have it either. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's probably the highest. It, it was at 2,300 yeah. something still. He, he, we talked about him a little bit earlier. He has a very good mentality for, for solo queue. But generally, he has a he has quite some insight in the uh, mid uh, matchup, of course, as well. So it was very fun to cast with him. I'm going to be doing the German stream for the finals um, here again. Well, not the German stream, but a German recording for the ZDF. Um, I have actually no, absolutely no idea who I'm going to do that with. Oh, oh, oh in Singapore. Yeah, yeah, this event you're doing German casting. Yeah. How's your How's your German? My, my German's. <laughs> Say good night. Mine's getting better actually. <laughs> 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 I'll do it with you then. That's fine. Yeah, mine is getting better. Sprechen Sie uh -huh. Deutsch. I yeah. think that's about as far as I go. <laughs> I do. Do, do you common. speak German? Is that uh, Is it something like that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, nine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. It's been It's been a while since Poland, which was uh, yeah, ECC Poland. Yeah, which was just as hot as as here. It, that was a very warm event. That's that's for sure. It was. Oh, lots of fun. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm I'm really happy to be here. I, I'm liking the format that, we're that we have here. Uh, you guys at home can help us make this format even more awesome because we do have these three people right now. What we do during the game is we actually. We sit down here, taking notes on these uh, great uh, Toshiba laptops we have here. And you can send us questions during the games. Because Indeed. normally I always say, no, send us questions. But when you're commentating, when you're actually shoutcasting, you don't have the time to look at questions. But we do. Exactly. We have all the time in the world to coin the phrase. But yeah, if you are doing it, hash IEM, mm -hmm. Intel Extreme Masters, of course. That is the event you're at. 
You can see them there, right there on the back of the screen. Now, if, if I can reach my hand up, there they are. Yay. Reach, reach across Intel. Obviously, BenQ also one of the sponsors here, giving us all these wonderful monitors. So, if you have any questions you want to ask myself, Zenon, Ocelot, or even Jason and Joe, obviously mm -hmm. over in the casting station, as uh, Jason gives me a big thumbs up. <laughs> um, but he did actually, literally. <laughs> literally, literally. Um, yeah, they, they are. Thumb. They are looking at uh, Twitter right now, and and also don't forget to follow Joe Miller. So it's at Joe yes. underscore. Miller because <laughs> just 500 more followers ladies and gentlemen and Joe Miller will have to shave all his hair off maybe just maybe we could make that happen while we're here in Singapore That'd be great if you I guys will do it home, myself if we, we will queue up to do it maybe we'll <laughs> do it on camera I don't know but uh, yep. I've seen a J shave in Joe Miller before it was in uh, Norway it was it was a case of I think Norwegian TV just didn't like his hair so he he went Shave for a haircut it. and then nice. ended up just shaving him all off. It was it was pleasant. Well, it it's, it's it's very nice of him. He's been growing it out right now, so that when we do shave it off, it's gonna actually look good because there's all this this all of this 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 hair going on right now. So yeah, it's just sitting just over there right <laughs> now, and he's looking very happy. That we're smiling <laughs> nonchalantly. Yeah, he's yeah. looking forward. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So he's smiling nonchalantly about that one. But uh, enough talk about Joe Miller's uh, yes. shaven uh, hair. Right. Um. Ilohel, let's just talk about. The them for a second that the, the players on the team have some experience but I do believe this is the first time that they've played at an offline event together as this team. So I'm just trying to think down. I mean Arqual, I recognize yes. Arqual. I'm pretty Arqual, sure yep. he was at ECC Poland. Um, I'm pointing at the screen here. He's really yeah, good see, top not, not much help for you guys right, at home, yeah, yeah. but uh, we have our cheat sheet on the screen right now. And Overpower uh, also sounds familiar. Um, Overpower. Well, yeah, obviously I think he was at some event as well. Um, but let's just walk through the, the, the lineup real quick. So we're going to have Arquel in top lane. We're going to have, uh, well, Ocelot is just stealing. He's, the he's just joining the game, Thanks so Ocelot. don't worry about yeah. that. Yeah, All right. Okay, oh. yes. Right. Yes, we should join the next game as well. He's doing the important part, but yeah. I mean, so how would you, how do you approach this game as ELO Hell? Great. So they're coming into this one. They've had uh, they've gone through the qualifiers. They've gone through, etc. They're prepared for this one. They're coming in against a team that you don't know. So... Uh, mainly for you, Oslo. I mean, how do you approach it as a team you are unaware of? Whereas, obviously, Armageddon could probably look up Elo Hell and figure out what they want to ban against them, what they want to play against them. Well, I think both teams are a bit clueless about what the opposite each other. Plays. Yeah, yeah. Mm. and um, I mean, just do standard bans. But I think, I honestly think, um, AMGD is gonna be surprised at this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I like that. So hopefully these guys are going to get underway. But I believe, I believe Jarrett may be on the main stage to introduce the teams. I, I might be wrong. No, I'm wrong. Are no. Are you wrong? Are you wrong? No, I'm wrong because we're sure. getting straight no, to right. pick some bands. So let's get straight to pick some bands, let's ladies and gentlemen. So without further ado, let's see what the bands come out with. Well, they came in pretty thick and fast in the last match, so they were ready and waiting for it. So... At the moment, there is no ban coming in, so they are taking their time on the first ban. So immediately, this tells me Elo Hell's not sure how to ban mm. this one, whether they should go with yeah, the generic ban. Yeah, standard ban. Yeah. Standard ban. Listen, the first ban, we don't have the bans on screen quite yet, but we'll just give you the radio cast. Shen, the first ban for Armageddon. And that, of course, very, very standard ban as well. I mean, apparently, he's like a 80% ban rate in solo queue at the moment. Uh, and that's, I guess, just because Shen? people do it. Shen, yeah. That's Shen, quite a lot. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a lot. Diana, the next band, so we're not going to see it. Banana. Amimu. 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 That almost sounds to me like they have a specific thing in mind where they don't want that AOE um, route. Or you maybe they are just, they just tracked mm. Elo Hell a little bit. Okay. Because they do play Amumu. Okay. Darius is the last band, obviously, here for Elo Hell, and we have it on, on screen now. And Cassadin. Well, these are not standard bands. This, I is, mean very uns this is very non standard. Yeah, why would you ban Cassadin? I, I got no clue. That is the worst band you can ever do. This is the <laughs> most controllable <laughs> champion in the game. I love your honesty, yeah. Oslat. <laughs> <It's laughs> that's well that's <laughs> that is why you are here. I mean, that's that's one of the things to talk about. Okay, Xin Zhao being picked up. This is something we've seen uh, Diamond Prox playing in, in, in Moscow 5 a lot lately. So Elo Hell obviously going with that. I'm guessing it's going to be the jungler as well. Mm -hmm. Seems to be working out quite well again lately. Actually, Jin Zhao Yangle is really, really strong. People don't even know yet that knock-up. 
Yeah. Jesus, man. And the, the, the knock apart as well. The Crescent Sweep, yeah. the uh, ultimate correctly. And let's just say it all together. Zin Shao. Zin Shao. Very good. Yes, Very good. I am all in right. Singapore, uh, so I best get pronunciation right. Is it Chin right. Zhao? Is it bad? No, it's, uh, it's Zin Shao. Zin Shao. Zin. Zin, Zin yes. yes. Very good. Thank you. Sorry, I'm going to shut up about that now. <laughs> so Nunu Ash is going to be the He's a rider. What do you expect, man? He's a rider. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, Nunu Ash. We saw Nunu and Caitlyn before. It is a great tower pushing combo. Ash has been coming back into it lately, so it's mm. starting to get back, back into usefulness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically, uh, as I said, the, the, the aggressive bottom lanes nice. are getting slowly nerfed. So obviously, Ashe and Vayne are going to take over. But Leona Graves is still Fast picks. Very, very strong. And oh, really? interesting there. We are going oh, wow. to see a either top lane or jungle Warwick. That was a really not standard pick right now, man. Yeah, well, the calf is in the middle, of course. Uh, one of your favorite champions in the world, Ursula. Yeah. Don't say the word you want to say. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we are going to see where, where he's going to go. But yeah, you're right. non standard picks. I have to say, you say that, that uh, aggressive bot lanes have been getting nerfed, but we haven't really touched Graves that much, have we? So I think Graves Leona is still going to be very, very dominant. Still, Graves is kind of controllable. The problem with um, with uh, well with Koki and Ezreal is it's just too much magic damage. Mm -hmm. With Graves, I mean, you can get ammo and stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, I see, I see. Yeah. So the final pick's going to come through. We're going to wait to see what the AP carry is going to be there. No against up against Karthus. What would you go up against the Karthus at this run? Well, I think Overpower loves playing against Karthus because he, he actually plays this assassin kind of champions. Right. Uh, he might even play Fiddlesticks middle lane. Ooh, a Vladimir that could go to... Actually, it's a bit Yeah, yeah. Karina, assassin, yeah. there you go. Well, the ultimate one assassin one right champions. there. Snowball like crazy with that. Uh, Katarina is one of those dangerous, dangerous champions, and of course it's going to be the top lane. So I'm guessing it's going to be Warwick jungle. It could be top lane Warwick, but I would expect it to be jungle. But I mean, I, hmm. I mean, even War Warwick's just a champion we haven't seen for such a long time. The uh, Olaf, okay, so they could be either or. Mm -hmm. Warwick could be actually. Uh, apparently, Warwick is a good pick right here because if Warwick is good against something, it's against these double AP teams. You know, yeah. you can go um, Spirit Visage, you can go uh, Wit's End. You can go a uh, really, uh, you, you got a, a lot of items that you can go for against double AP. And Warwick, if Warwick stays alive and is a little bit fair, he's gonna wreck them. I, w I want everybody to say this, and everybody at home, Warwick. Warwick. It's my town of birth. It's called Warwick. There's no, these, the W is silent, the second okay, one. Warwick, <laughs> Warwick. At least I'm not the only pronunciation. <laughs> I'm, I'm Spanish, <laughs> man. <laughs> Leave me alone. That one the Americans have been on my case for. But uh, Team Comps, what are we going with here? I want to see Amagadan do well. They have two super strong late game champions in Carthus and Olaf. They could become murder machines, but if I had to put money, I'd probably put it on Ilohel. <laughs> Tiliporon Karaina, I think they're going for pure early mid game. I think Ilohel got this. Okay. okay, so without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, and a little bit over time, uh, we're just get over to Joe and Jason to take us through this game. It is going to be Ilohel versus Armageddon. And I was hoping they was going to call it the something desk, the, the cool cooler kids <laughs> desk or anything like that, but no such love from the cool kids desk today. Uh, so, Jason, looking yeah, at this game, we've got one thing that I think, unless I miss miss that. misheard there, uh, there is no smite at all with Armageddon. Yeah, that's, I mean, Warwick doesn't necessarily need it, but if you're going to be doing, you know, uh, you know, Dragon or even Baron, you can't afford to let that smite go to waste. They do have a Nunu, though, um, which obviously with the consume yeah. helps out quite a bit. And over, or actually, Ilhel playing uh, quite a few of their main champions. Uh, Overpow, very good at Katarina, plays it quite often in the mid lane. And Arkel on his Vladimir in the top lane. So they should have, I mean, that little bit of an advantage. I, I, I'm assuming they're very confident right now. And we're not doing a remake, so I'm assuming that actually was meant to not have Smite um, for Armageddon. Yeah, it looks that way for them. So uh, interested to see what their plans are. Um, and obviously, the tag AMGD, I'm going to say Armageddon. <laughs> uh, at least a few times during this one. That's exactly as I read it at the start. Uh, but we'll see what they go for early on. We can see a typical line defense from uh, Elo Hell, just covering pretty much every entry um, into their side of the jungle there. Katarina on the top side by the Wraiths. Graves looking there down the bottom. Uh, in the meantime, though, Armageddon are all stacked up by their blue buff. That's uh, uh, pretty much as safe as it gets for uh, in terms of defending a buff, Jason, at the start. I'm, I'm honestly, I'm just waiting for Ward to start blue and be like, "Crap, I don't have smite." <laughs> How often do we see a ward there at the start? How often do we see a Warwick? <laughs> well, it just pro probably as often. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and we also have Katarina, which we get to say our favorite thing, Katarina, every time something uh, something amazing happens or does exactly what Katarina does. Um, Intel Extreme Masters Cologne qualifier we yeah. had. <laughs> 
Uh, I think Katarina's end stats were like 50, 0, 50 or something like that. 50. Uh, Something around Something that ridiculous, region. yeah. Wasn't quite that much, obviously, but uh, yeah, that was uh, very, very bad news. And Overpower, his most played champion in Season 2 is Katarina. Yeah, I mean, we uh, when we were doing the qualifiers, we saw him play a really mean Fiddlesticks. So he ran some special runes. I'm not going to talk about it now. Maybe we'll see it uh, another time, but... They're not even starting Wolves or anything. Yeah. I, I don't even know what to say, Joe. I mean, I wish I had, I wish I had some clue, but... I guess we'll find out very shortly. I mean, yeah, you, have the, you don't have Consume on Nunu either. He went for Blood Boil. So it's just going to be Warwick versus the, the Golem. And I'm kind of really interested to see what's going to happen here. I mean, he, they're still going. He knows he doesn't have Smite. I mean, Warwick doesn't really need it. With that Ignite, game, going really have potent ganks. But the objectives, you're going to lose so many objectives for not having that. I mean, Elo has no reason to be scared of doing Dragon if you can't steal it. Yeah, I honestly really interested to see how this whole game pans out there. Obviously, this Katarina against Karthus in the middle. Overpower gonna be in uh, Pete's face, who actually, uh, as far as I'm aware, his actual normal nickname is Barney Stinson, yeah. which is already an amazing yes, nickname. It is. Uh, his name is actually Paul, I think his second name, so that may be where the uh, P comes from, as we are gonna see there in the middle. I just saw Katarina's icon flow over the top of Karthus, so that's something we're gonna have to keep a real sharp eye on uh, hey with Joe. this Katarina. Meanwhile, yeah, me. <laughs> Uh, in particular. No, no, no. Are we going to see Karthus go legend? Wait for it. Derry. Oh, I see what you did there, Barney <laughs> I had to Stinson. put it out. I had to do it. Good job, Jason. <laughs> I knew we had you here for something. Um, so anyway, down in this bottom lane again. I mean, aggressive bottom lane with that Leona Graves in there. When she catches in there with that Zenith Blade, you're going to have Graves quick draw in. And that's a lot of damage with the Buckshot coming out afterwards as well. And this bottom lane has to be very careful. Elo Hell just trying to zone them out as much as they possibly can. Again, in the middle lane, just a bit of harassment coming down. Top lane, obviously, Olaf versus Vladimir. And, well, Vladimir... You know, once he gets up towards that level nine stage, that's where he's really at his safe is where he's, you know, where he's yeah. gonna be really comfortable in this top lane. Until then, I mean Vladimir, is he gonna have much to worry about with this Warwick coming in there? Uh, it's no. certainly pre six. No. no, I mean and Warwick doesn't even have boots, he wants cloth armor. Which and he's got flash ignite, so there's no exhaust there to yeah. uh, to stop to slow him down or what have you. So yeah, really concerned about how those ganks are going to go in the top lane. Meanwhile, we are going to see a double buff Sin Chow coming in. There is the knock up, and oh, he will perfect. finish this one off. First blood going over onto Zazus for Elo Hell. There, great start to Elo Hell's uh, first game. And down in the bottom lane, Arantil is very low as well. <laughs> Actually, the owner left that one, I think, to try and get out of tower reach, uh, maybe to give to Graves as well. But Graves is going to come in from the backside, and there is an auto attack to finish off and two kills in the bottom lane as well three for zero <laughs> already two and a half thousand gold in the lead wow well i should have had a double kill there but he kind of just walked away instead of uh getting that last on to ash yeah i think he was like well you just take it leona no problem leona's like no you no really you take it no no please please just go um but yeah i mean the bot lane i was going to mention you know if you play an aggressive bot lane like graves leona if you fall behind the beginning if you get ganked you know you die early on you're gonna have such a hard time uh you know in that lane phase because you don't have you know the healing um, Nunu obviously doesn't have it either with Ash, but they have so much kiting potential, and Graves is going to have that attack speed reduction from that uh, Ice Blast. So it's just really well, now going in ELO's favor because of these uh, first initial two kills they got the bottom lane. Yep. And I'm still just, I'm not, I'm not really sold on Warwick right now. I mean, he's level three, so he's behind. Um, he should be easy level four right now, as you see it in the top lane. Zin oh, going in onto Olaf. Top lane, Joe. Hey, you can't really do anything there. I mean, I'm going to get away from Katri and look at this top lane, which. Also, uh, Olaf managed to get away from, but at least uh, an exhaust. I mean, Olaf doesn't have an exhaust. Karthus doesn't have an exhaust. Obviously, you've got the Wall of Pain, which, yeah, oh, all well and good. As again, <laughs> damage coming down this top lane. We may see them diving in there. Sin Chow just getting rid of that creep wave. Warwick is coming in from around the what side, but they do? are going to dive in for this one anyway. There is the pool from, from Vladimir, and he's going to get the kill in the end. The Ignite put down onto Arquell. Zaza could have died from maybe just the night anyway uh, but they are going to turn this one back around and that will be four to zero for elo hell i mean we've seen from these teams uh, from this team in particular former kmt now elo hell how good they were in that qualifier they are definitely not a pushover even in the european team big up and comers um, and armageddon well after this start have more than their work cut out for them yeah and speaking of an up and comer it's great to see these new teams coming around because you know we've had you know the, the legends sticking around for so long but now we're finally oh. giving a run for money but that new new he's gonna he's dead he's dead yeah he just walking straight out there not really uh, having Ash behind him to get a slow off or whatever. Meantime, I mean, they had a ward in this bush. They knew that Leona was there. And 
with that Zenith Blade in there, Buckshot after a you know, quick drawing in. Yeah. You don't escape from that kind of thing. But yeah, my point is no no exhaust in top lane, no exhaust in middle lane, no exhaust from Warwick. Like Until he hits six, he's got nothing to work with with a gank. He's, he's a wolf walking into a lane, which is just not that scary. Yeah, and uh, I just want to point out items real quick. We see Vitamir actually going for the uh, the, the Iron Boots of Lucidity, giving that cooldown reduction. I was doing a, a, an, epi or a an episode of an interview show I do uh, with Salsi from Wolf X TSM Evo. Um, he actually talks about how running the Boots of Lucidity on Vladimir is actually beneficial if you're against a double AP, or if you have a double AP, but it looks like he actually just escaped his scotch free, and he actually does, so... Yeah, because I mean, R. Kelly's not getting pressure. Do anything. You still can't do anything against them there. Meanwhile, in this bottom lane, we are actually going fairly low. Ward in the bush. I'm pretty sure they saw that go down. They certainly should have. Uh, and they're not super healthy either, so they really have to watch out for this one. Just showing a bit of confidence here, which we've seen in the past can really come back and bite a team. Um, as Wula actually is going to get ignited. I think more of a bait to get in there. Wula is going to die. That's but here set. comes Caitlyn. And that is the first kill on towards Ash Nunu. Yeah, putting a bit of damage down just to maybe stop the, you know, having enough health to get underneath that tower to uh, actually dive them. But Elo Hell looking so very, very confident up until now. Um, look at the gold already, Jason. Look I at mean, the CS currently right now. The CS 59 to 27 in the middle lane. 53. Ash has 10 CS. 10 CS. 10 CS, Jason. <laughs> I don't know what else to really say about Yeah, that. I mean, there really is no coming back from that. Even the top lane, 49 CS to 18 for Vladimir against Olaf. And, I mean, Olaf should be able to overtake Vladimir at round level 6, but not when Vladimir is this fed. And they want to dive again, I think, here. Uh, we are seeing Zazas just taking away those big golems. Olaf is going to walk straight into him. He's got Blue Wolf on there as well. Going to knock Flash him up, up here five. in this next one. And there is the ultimate down from Vladimir. And that is enough damage. He is dead. Zazas says, no, it isn't over. I'm going to steal that kill away from you. <laughs> I want that one for now. And that will be 7-1 to one for Elo Hell. Yeah, Scumbag Jungler stealing that kill right now. But we have Tyke taking Blue Buff right here. Not handing that over to Karthus, but he needs that XP. He's just level 4 right now. Almost level 5. And then we see, uh, we see Zin, Zin Shao, which, Joe, I bet you're happy to find out. That's how it's said correctly, because you always make fun of me with that. It's in at level 6 already. And bottom lane, there's a kill, Jason. Uh, <laughs> and a teleport coming in. Uh, so they're going to want to dive this Ash as well, by the looks of things. Graves is actually tanking it up there. Turret goes down. All the damage onto Ash. Oh, and before Ash it comes around the corner um, in the bottom. Yeah. And he's like, oh, I'm getting out of here. But it looks like he still might be in trouble sitting at level 5. We'll flash over that wall into Wu Light. But obviously not level 6, not going to do too much. Yeah, well, you can't do anything against them. I mean, there's just too much damage there. Overpower, going to take down Taiji, and that is 10 to 1. And now in the middle. <laughs> well, at least there's lots of action, Jason. Uh, we can say that. There are a lot of kills yeah. going down. I mean, we talk about statistics when we do our shows together, Joe. You know, being up 10% gold 12 minutes in, you have like a 9% win ratio, or win percentage. Katarina, <laughs> as we always talk about. Um, but yeah, I mean, the gold lead is even bigger than that, and there really isn't coming back from this. I mean, Elo how has a strong... Well, that's Ben Nunu. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just say that. They have such so a strong team to pick off people, and they have a lot of synergy with that Leona ultimate, with the Katarina ultimate, um, yeah, the Xin Zhao, you know, separation. They have, they have a strong team throughout the rest of the game, and uh, Armageddon, I mean, without Warwick level 6 still, 10 minutes into the game, he, early game's completely over. They can't gank anything with him. And he pretty much just falls off really hard right now. I mean, he can be uh, knocked off his ultimate by, by Zin Shao and Leona. And he doesn't have to tank enough to do that anyways. I mean, he'll just get blown up. Uh, I hate to be the guy that kind of spoils the party, but there should be no chance in elo health that uh, they're going to lose this game. As we are going to see a big fight kicking off. It's and it's going to be it's a lot two. of kills. They're going to go back in there. There is another kill coming out. It's Vladimir actually takes it. Karth Assault who may actually pick them up a kill or not uh, they got at least low from that one. now they dive in on towards Olaf there is another kill for Zazas this turret is going down there are minions there Ash may be able to do something but as soon as you get stunned up Katarina dives in yeah. and that is another kill 18 to 1 and Jason I've seen one game in competitive League of Legends at a top level for me that was uh, go for lol pro Asia where a team called lol ladies lost before Baron spawned and I'm wondering if this is going to happen before that point. I hate to do this to Carlos, but when they played Tales of the Lane against Eclipse, it was an 18-minute game, as uh, Demon was pointing out. Yeah, but Baron had spawned. <laughs> He's looking over at me like, damn you, Jason, why'd you say that? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, they're just backing off. I mean, how much gold do they have to spend, Joe? Four 3, million. <laughs> 3,000 on Vladimir, 2,300 on Zin Zhao, 3,000 on Katarina, 2,500 on Graves, and 1,600 on Leona. They're going to come back with so many items that there's just absolutely no way Armageddon can fight them. They, they can't even turtle anymore because they lost an inhibitor. 
Yeah. And this is where you need Bruce Willis to save Armageddon, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> Die on that uh, that asteroid, right? That's all right. Uh, but I it's, cried in that movie. Uh, to say it's not looking good for Armageddon will probably be the understatement of the century at this point of it. I mean, we're almost 12 minutes in, 18 to 1, 23.7 to 9.3 thousand gold. Um, and it's in Elo's hell, like, hands to, to lose the game. Yeah, much. and that's, that's, again, a bit of an understatement in my opinion, as we do see uh, Warwick go down again. Now, Ash is in all kinds of trouble. Will flash away, but guess what? Katarina's coming back. Katarina should be able to clean house Katarina. here. There's the kill. Double kill for Katarina. Ah, not quite getting the triple onto Nunu, but they can just, to be honest, they push for the win. They yeah. can push for the win with this one. They've got Super Minion coming in with this wave and it's 12 minutes and 17 seconds here as we are putting loads of wards down because at the end of the day that's three hits that they can take as well uh, as this first nexus turret is going to go down second one will surely follow as well and the third one is just a matter of well, the next itself the third one uh, it's just a matter of seconds behind but this is a play from armageddon but how much of a play is it going to be <laughs> I'm not quite sure, uh, as we do see three kills coming down. There's the fourth on to Ash. Carthus may escape, or maybe they'll dive him on the fountain. That's how far ahead they are right now. This Nexus turret taking a beating down to half health. There's already eight seconds until Nunu, the next one alive, will come into play. And this, for me, is a new record game. Elo Hell, in 13 minutes, going to take down Armageddon, 25 to 2. Katarina, 12-0-6. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Just, I mean, pretty one-sided game. I mean, we were thrown off by that lack of smite on Warwick, and it, it, it really affected him. He was so slow in the jungle because of that. He slowed just naturally because he's Warwick and wasn't able to gank anything. I mean, they got out of the laning phase so early on. Yeah. And he'll, he'll look happy. Well, and going I mean, 1-0 in the group stage already. That Warwick was obviously one part of their problems, but I think just generally they had a lot of... They had problems across the board. I mean, uh, just to quickly note the CS here um, as an example, Vladimir against Olaf top lane, 82 to 19. Yeah. Jungle, 51 to 24. Mid lane, 92 to 36. Bottom lane, 75 to 20. Even Leona had a four CS lead there uh, over Nunu in the bottom lane as a support. Um, so just overall fantastic performance from Elo Hell. They went out there and I guess fired off a bit of a warning shot to everyone else in the yeah. group. You know, they're taking this 100% serious. Um, they, no messing around in this one. You know, they're so far ahead. A lot of teams would be, you know, trolling a little bit, to put mm -hmm. it frankly. Uh, but they got the job done. First game out of the way and they will um, you know, take those three points and go top with Absolute Legends NA uh, with those three points at the top of the group. So uh, I think that's enough for uh, our anal okay. uh, analysis. So we're going to throw it over to the Cool Kids desk and they're going to bring you a bit more. Three Stooges. What? Thank you very much, Joe and Jason, for that uh, rather hasty commentary of uh, that match. And we actually have the uh, a highlight that Ocelot yes. has prepared for you from that uh, game. So if we go straight to the in-game, we got a highlight of that game. And there it is. It's uh, one second in. It was 0-0. Zero, zero. So uh, that was pretty much the last uh, moment that Armageddon really had a chance. But that is the point that Ido Hell took the game, ran away with it. And I think that it was over here, pretty much, wouldn't you say, Ocelot? Mm. Yeah, actually, <laughs> this was the, the, the part where the game was more even. So yes, yes, it's true. They never got this even again. And at this point, well, the, the yeah, cloth no, five no smite, potion no, starts. I don't know. No smite. It's, it's pretty strong. It's pretty strong. It's a very safe start for the jungler. You don't gank anyway with Warwick, so it's perfectly fine. You never gank with Warwick. He just sits in the jungle until the 20-minute mark. Um, yeah. No, but honestly, the I mean, without, we say? without being this too disheartening we, we can pull away from the replay now <laughs> yeah <laughs> we, we, we really could it was sorry. over already uh i mean without without being too too disheartening they did break your record so um <laughs> <you don't> <laughs> 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 they did take the 18 and a half minutes from tales of yeah. the late so also like, it's okay so something good came out of this match uh 13 I, I knew minutes this game was was gonna be good somehow <laughs> you if, that if, was you, if you want to punch him i can just <laughs> step away <laughs> and it's fine <laughs> <laughs> so 13 minutes is the new uh, record. I think we can safely say so. Uh, Elo Hell now have that one. It's pretty good. So, so that, that's that's a uh, that's a challenge for you guys. <laughs> 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 to try and come back to. You. Okay. It's fine, fine. I, uh, I, I don't mind. I don't mind. In, in all seriousness, though, I mean, uh, I mean it, it was a one-sided game, and we yeah. knew it would be. Yeah. Um, the Singaporean teams obviously coming here. They've, they've they've stepped up. You know, I guess to be fair, if I went and got. 
five of my friends, we'd probably be in the same situation. It would be <laughs> it would probably be a one sided stump. If we sort of came up against a pro team, it it because it, it always gets me that people go, Oh, I could do better than that. I could yeah, do better yeah. than that. But but the problem is, right, it's so we're obviously uh, Ash, too good. I mean Ash is a prime example down that bottom lane. You you know, yes, he only had ten C S against what, fifty at one point. But the problem is that the pro combos, they have so much, they know how to harass and do so much that you just be sat at your tower and then they're just lying. They just completely block you out of the experience, the I CS. Mean, they just completely keep take you out of the game. We, we are having fun about, I mean, um, talking about it and stuff. But let's be honest, probably this team, I don't know how much rating this team has. Maybe imagine, uh, uh, I mean, imagine they, they could have easily 2K or whatever. The thing is that the difference, okay, in between professional teams and teams that are amateur, a little bit worse than amateur, like this it's guy, it's like huge. this team, it's just too huge, you know? Mm. Well, it, I'm, I'm it, it looked sure really there's, there's no, there's like no stone, gap. And, and we were talking about this off, off camera. We were talking yeah. about, obviously, the jungle situation that you've had at SK recently <laughs> is is how you filter those players into those teams at the moment. Obviously, this is something Riot are doing with mm. their Season 3. Obviously, they're having the new uh, the 5v5 ranks. He's going to filter into the, the top five, the next five teams. He's going to filter into it. And this is kind of where it's all coming from. There is no in between at the moment the yeah. gap the gap from between the pro teams that started off probably about a year ago i guess you, most of you guys over that in fact two years for sk i think it is now mm -hmm. um you know those teams that have been around for so long your tsms your clgs that have all been uh, doing what they do for so many years now there's nothing that feeds into it there's just no way into it and even from a publicity side i know for a fact i know teams like uh, black who obviously were at mlg new york um they have a fairly new lineup they were trying to get to dreamhack I don't know whether they've got there because they couldn't get sponsorship, they couldn't get anything together, they can't do it because there is no filter. And that's, yeah, that's kind of a problem. The hand, I don't think it's too elitist. I, I think this game is probably the game that is the, the least, the least just, elitist, yeah. you know? Yeah. The least elitist for sure because every, every, team, every team has a chance to be good, every team has a chance to qualify for whatever, you know? This is actually a really, a really remarkable thing because normally in these games, I mean, I don't want to say any name, you know, of any game, but normally this is very, very elitist, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, with this game, it doesn't happen. So I'm, I'm quite happy about it. And Every team is capable of qualifying for anything. Yeah. And there's still, I think there's still a, a, a strong mismatch in the uh, lol um, pro scene right now. The, the supply and demand of really top teams. I know for a fact there was a lot of big multi-gaming clans out there looking for still League looking of Legends. For teams, yeah. Still looking for teams. I mean, there's a couple of really big names that are obviously still absent from our scene. I mean, Quantic Gaming just recently picked up the former Orb. Right, yep. from, uh, from yep. Orb Reddit Nation. So that's one big name that's now in. But there's still a couple of big names missing. And that means that if you have uh, what it takes to, to prove to a sponsor that you're good enough, you can get a sponsor easily. But what your point, Lee, the of course, is that it's hard to, to prove that, to, to, to actually well get to the The problem place. is that um, you talk about the big teams, and you're obviously talking right. about your, your EGs, etc., yes. of the world. They're not just looking for a team. They're looking yeah. for someone that they can market, which is a big difference. I mean, that's that's a big step. But that's, a, that's a completely different yeah, story in strong. itself. The difference probably, I think, it is that if one team qualifies for one event, uh, what what is that telling you? Well, that, that is telling you that that team qualified for that event. Well, well but but if, if you're an organization, just put yourself in that situation. You have to hire those people. You have to pay that people, you know, a monthly salary. Uh, what is telling you that that team is gonna be long, quite long? You know, yeah. that I mean, the fact that they qualified only told you well that you're they qualified. A, a lot of trust in that team that they're not going to do something rash on an event. You know, something that's going to make your name suddenly right, be bad. Right. You yeah. know, they have to. They you are. They are also representing your name when they're there. But then either way, you hire the the team for only one event and let's see what happens, or you actually study a whole team over the months. Okay, this yeah. team didn't do any change or whatever. This team is sticking on the lineup or this team, at least 60% of the team uh, is sticking during this month. Obviously, that is um, that, that is actually marketable for a team. That is actually something that our organization is looking for. But new teams, newcomers are, are happening every day, are yeah. appearing every day. So obviously, are really good teams. You, you cannot get all of them for your organizations. You, you have to uh, study the, the market, basically. Yeah, you I mean, uh, the, the teams that get in there, obviously, they A, to start with, prime example is is the go for lols the the qualifications for the intel extreme masters they're always online that's how you get into them that's how mm -hmm. <laughs> i don't know why i keep going back to sk it's as, fine, a, as fine. an example yeah, but it's fine, that's man. how moscow 5 came about with empire 
they had that right. qualify. It was a famous moment where they uh, they all caught you out. And I actually thought they'd been caught. And obviously the commentary was the Nunu Ash uh, Carthus combo. On me, on us. Uh, on, me, on me, basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you, came, you came yeah. from mid lane to gang. I right? came from mid lane to gang, bottom lane with yeah. my uh, Seraph. With Seraph, yeah. Yes. And I came so so happy. <laughs> I'm gonna get some kills. We caught about three v two, yeah, exactly. And then boom, <laughs> boom, and then boom. Yeah. And then I, I, I mean, Empire, Moscow Empire five wasn't that good, but but that, but that point, but that made them change the whole mindset. Just yeah. just to make you see how important mindset is. After that right moment, Empire became the thing. You yeah. know, M five and stuff like just the mindset. It's just the work ethic changed. The mindset changed. In game, they had more confidence. Everything is so important. I mean. Everything related with mindset is so important. And after that moment, it changed. Yeah, and that's how they became uh, Moscow 5, obviously, after that. But that's how the teams get through. So how hard is it? I mean, obviously, you're probably not in a prime example to talk about how hard it is for these teams to break through. But, um, I mean, Daniel, you're from Riot Games. Obviously, you, you guys are trying to push this yeah. as much as you can to get these teams in there. But how hard is it re realistically for these teams to just break through into the scene currently? I mean... It I'm thinking back to say when Dignitas got through. Right. They were rock solid. They qualified for, uh, I think it was, Isn't it was yeah. IPL3 was and IEM New York. Yeah. It was the two events. They were back to back. Right, yeah. And then, I, and then obviously I spoke to Odie and said, you know, these guys, these guys are, are good. good. They've qualified for these two events. You should look at them. I think it's still very hard, but I, I think we're still working on lots of ways to make it uh, easier and to also make it more attractive for the big organizations to pick up teams. Because obviously, let's talk about the big thing, the championship series is coming yes. up next year. And if you get one of the teams that you're sponsoring into the championship series, that is so much guaranteed exposure for your brand. That mm -hmm. is just that is the, the jackpot, right? So you yeah. want to be able to predict uh, predict which team is going to make it into the championship series. And of course, for you, the, the, the qualifiers we announced are going to be in January. And that is going to be, you want to have, you basically want to be backing one of the teams that makes it in there because once you are in there you have guaranteed large-scale exposure but at the same time we are continuing our uh, circuit uh, a challenges circuit program which is now truly the challenges circuit because these are the guys that challenge the established teams in the yeah. championship series so if you make uh, if you make it into any of these tournaments that will be in the challenges circuit for season three you will still collect points and these points will help get you in the up down matches i'm not quite sure how we're going to call them the yet promotion relegation something the like relegation that. matches yeah, yes yeah. Uh, so there is still going to be a very very clear path for teams and um, you pointed out the path is online qualifiers and um, while we don't necessarily tell an organizer or a partner you have to run your tournaments like this we always tell partners look we would really prefer if you guys kept your qualifiers as open as possible because we want any team out there any team at all to be able to say you know what I'll just sign up with my four friends and maybe we are good enough. I mean, most of the time they won't be, but maybe we are good enough to make it into one of these things and then maybe we'll, we'll get the points and w once you start amassing some uh, challenger circuit points, that is a clear sign to sponsors saying, well, these guys are candidates for the championship series at some point down the line. And I, I hope, it is. I think it is my hope, I don't want to speak for the entire esports department, but I, I think it is the definitely my, my hope that the changes coming in Season 3 are going to make it easier even as they establish these this this uh, cater of teams in the championship series that obviously will feel like you know like yeah. the elite up there, but we still want to make it so it's easy enough to challenge to them to get in there. Yeah, to say we can take one of these guys down. Let's go for it. And, uh, and also, lot have you uh, from your point of view when you've had uh, practices, scrims, or whatever you'd like to call them these days, <coughs> have you noticed any particularly new teams that are coming through that are really strong but just are an un unknown at the moment? Well, there, as I said, there are a lot of newcomers, and um, well, I, I always say is harder maintaining yourself at the top for yeah, quite long uh, than just reaching the very top for once. But um, Moscow five, five obviously right this now. will happen. Obviously, like newcomers are going to appear. Those newcomers are going to most likely um, upset a lot of teams. Um, I mean, they're capable of beating many people. They are uh, Skill-wise, they are probably equal to the pro players. Probably when it comes down to work ethic, when it comes down to, okay, when, the, when, when your team loses, you practice better. You don't go. You don't rage and go solo queue and ah, you know, screw it. No, no, no. Uh, that, that that is the real difference, you know. So that is probably the only difference in between those teams, that those newcomers, and SK Gaming, M5, CLG, whatever. Can, can, can yeah. you name any? Yeah, I mean, a lot. For instance, Eclipsia is a newcomer. Yeah, yeah, they definitely come out. They're oh blue. Yeah. You, you don't know how is ev how is everything gonna turn, you know. Um, if they start losing, because they will eventually right. start losing. Every team loses 
Yeah, they uh, they have to get over it. We will see if they are capable of going over it. Team Alternate, they started. I think I spoke with one of you guys. I don't remember. I I, I think one, it was you, Zenon. I said this Team Alternate are really really strong, but they are solo queuers. I'm not sure how is their mindset. As soon as they start losing, we will see how they react. They started losing. And they didn't react so well. I mean, this is what I mean. Yeah. Mindset, work ethic. Well, and you've also got the difference. experience level of, of when they do eventually qualify for these events. They can get to an event. They get some money together to get to the events. Then they need the experience of being there under the stage lights. Uh, that fans is are everyone's staring at them. You know, the, the pressure of being on the big screen. That is a, a huge thing, you know. But, I mean, on the other hand, if you go to an event, most likely every single competitor... Um, you're fighting against is um, gift for esports. You know, has yeah. a gift for esports for he uh, eye hand coordination, um, yeah. reflex, whatever. You know, that person is gift. But as I said, the, the difference, the main difference, is the work ethic and mindset. So yeah, those teams are new, uh, newcomers. They are really, really good. They might beat you. Um, long term, we don't know. Short term, they are really scary. Okay, so moving on to the next.